Hello, this is uh, David Capertor at the lab at Lumetrics. Today, we're going to look at how do you measure the arc of a curvature on a windshield. So, uh, that poses an interesting problem for us in particular because normally we don't care what the distance is between the probe, the face of the probe, say, and the first surface that we're measuring, because we're usually measuring, you know, the first surface and then the surfaces below. But sometimes you do want to know how far the probe is from the first surface. Fortunately, we have a solution for that. It's called a reference signal, sig reference signal generator. Uh, it provides a peak, a uh, peak in front of all the surfaces that the probe sees. And it doesn't matter where the probe is, it's always in the same place. So if the probe moves up, the distance between that first peak and the first signal will show up as a, diff as a change in, in depth. So, uh, for example, what we have on screen here, this first peak, is the reference signal generator peak. It doesn't conform to anything physical in front of the, uh, the sample that we're reading, which is, uh, as you can see, I'll point over, there you go, uh, which you can see is a section of a windshield. The windshield is a very big item in it. Uh, didn't want to do the whole thing, but we'll, we'll measure the curvature of one small section and assume that it's representative of the, uh, of the full windshield. So, uh, to, to convince you, uh, and by the way, I heard that uh, Whiteboard Dave is lurking around somewhere, uh, so let's try to get this done before he shows up. I think we can. Uh, but I want to show you this, uh, this windshield and try to convince you that there's some curvature to it. Okay, a section of a windshield. You can see there's one small corner that could have come off of any of your cars. And if you look at it on edge here, let's see if I can get it in screen. There we go. You can see that it's got a slight curvature. So that presents, normally presents a very difficult problem because slight curvatures are very hard to measure accurately. The good news is, with our reference signal generator and the optic gauge, we can take accurate depth measurements and get an accurate curvature calculation done to tell us what arc this windshield has. I'm gonna put it back into the sample area. There we go. And uh, so what you're looking at now on the screen is the distance from the phantom reference signal generator spot, which stays at the same height as long as the probe doesn't wiggle or go up and down on us. So, so that's the other thing you gotta keep in mind. The probe, now that you have that reference signal generator is, you wanna sweep it across the surface of the uh, sample that you're measuring, in this case the windshield, without it moving up and down. Uh, because that will also look like a distance change. So we got this nice uh, double rod uh, slider here that keeps things pretty stable and we're going to use that uh, to keep everything nice and level. And the plan of attack here is, is we take a measurement every 25 millimeters we get a new depth measurement from the probe to using the reference signal generator. From the probe tip down to the, uh, you, don't see, you can't see me, you can't see my hand movements, down to the surface of the first surface of the windshield. Ha ha, here's the whiteboard. So what's going on is uh, we're measuring distances along this arc. And this is the SAG formula solved for the radius of curvature, which is what we're interested in. So radius of curvature equals this SAG. Sagittal depth is what uh, it's short for. 
divided by 2 plus L squared, which is the distance from uh, along the arc to the, to the radius, divided by 8 times the sag again. So we're getting these S numbers, and we're getting these L numbers. So the L numbers, as you remember, we started at 0, and we went in 25 millimeter increments until we made it all the way up to 250. So we'll have a bunch, what is that, 10? Uh, data points to plug into a table, which will also have S values. We get our S's and our L's, and we have everything we need to settle for R. Okay, back to you, Lab Dave. Well, thank you, Whiteboard Dave. That was very informative. Okay, now. Let's go ahead and do the measurements, and we can plug the uh, numbers we get into that formula and see if it works out. So, uh, I think we're set up for the first position here, which is, we'll call this we'll call this the zero position. Uh, and it looks like we're at. Uh, you know what? I'm going to switch over to. Uh, I'll show you quickly. Instead of working in microns, we're working in millimeters. There we go. Okay, so right now we've got uh, 6.822 millimeters. We'll call that at the zero, the zero horizontal position. Okay, let's go throw these into the formula and see what radius curvature comes out. Hello, Lab Dave here again. So, uh, looking at the data, it looks like I have a uh, tilt in my stage here as I trans transfer from one end to the other. And I'm going to show you briefly how I calibrate that because I can use that to uh, back out to the tilt that I see from the stage movement. So in other words, the stage isn't level. It uh, rises and lowers as it moves across. But it's a, linear, uh, a linear adjustment can be made to just take that out. Uh, it's very easy to do that. We just need two points. Right now, I have the stage at uh, the furthest out, so equivalent to the 250 position. And I'm reading uh, 11.7475 uh, millimeters. Uh, that's one point, and I wrote that down in my lab notebook. And then all I have to do is slide the uh, stage back over. Put my reference back underneath. And now I have about a 5.8. 5. 5 point, uh, earlier I read uh, 5.7, so I'm going to stick with that. But it's, uh, it's enough data to do a linear correction and uh, then run the calculations through the standard uh, SAG formula. All right. Let's go do that. Uh, greetings, Calculation Dave here, sometimes known as Ring Light Lit Dave. Uh, so I went off and I, I took the numbers and uh, 
that did a bunch of manipulations. It wasn't, uh, it, it, you know, you get these numbers that uh, span across the top of an arc, and really I like to think of it as coming from the bottom, so I have to convert them around a bit and get endpoints and, and sags and did the calculation. Turns out that the uh, arc of that, uh, sc uh, that uh, windshield was about four meters uh, in radius, uh, which is pretty big. And I believe that seems reasonable. Uh, that would be like an eight meter uh, sphere of glass that was then cut to fit onto a windshield. Uh, so we got some reasonable numbers and uh, looks good. So again, four millimeter radius, uh, four meter radius, uh, arc on, uh, on a pretty standard uh, windshield.